Hi, I wasn't planning on doing a video today, but then I saw this on Twitter. This is an article that's actually written six years ago, but it was shared today or whatever, and uh, 2022, and it has 65 likes and nine retweets. So it's, it's kind of like enough people are seeing it and thinking that it's kind of a current thing that I wanted to make a video and respond to it. So it's about uh, not using observables when you should use promises in Angular. Uh, so what's the main point of this? This was written six years ago, so a bunch of stuff in this is dated, but basically the idea is that this is complicated to use observables because you get unexpected behavior. If you use async pipe, it's going to actually trigger three separate HTTP requests. So uh, he talks about different things you can do to solve this. One would be like a share operator, but then timing is weird. And so uh, basically at the end, he's like, just use a promise because it does the job. So yeah, that's the basic point of this article. And I will say that promises are simpler than observables up front. You don't have to understand subscriptions. You don't have to understand uh, the, the async pipe. You don't have to understand the share operator or anything weird like that. Um, but the thing is, in Angular, you actually do have to understand those because in Angular, the HTTP client, it returns observables and uh, route params return observables. And you can minimize observables in your code base by as soon as possible converting to a promise using uh, last value from, but it's not going to uh, help you when you get to more sophisticated examples with asynchronous code. And so most Angular projects, there's going to be a lot of people that insist on using observable, observables because they do let you have cleaner code and observable and Angular invites you to use them constantly. So it really is the path of least resistance to just understand observables. So you have to understand that each of these async pipes is going to create a subscription. And so people have learned these things in, in the Angular community. And now what people usually do is they create like a view model type thing with an ng if, and then you don't have to worry about it throughout the template. It's just a simple thing that you take care of it at the beginning. And then it's simple after that. So uh, people have learned and become more comfortable with ArxJS. And so a lot of these issues aren't really issues anymore. This is just kind of part of learning Angular. If Angular uh, creates its reactive primitive, then maybe things can be as nice as they are in Svelte, uh, where with Svelte, you can have an observable like this and then just convert it over to Svelte's own reactive syntax. And then it's it's so easy to use it in the template here. It's just, You just use it like a regular variable after that and the subscriptions are managed for you and everything. I believe Angular could be this easy, or at least, yeah, pretty much this easy. So um, that's that's like the, the past and the future of Angular, but we are where we are, and most Angular projects are pretty heavy with RxJS, and I'm glad because RxJS is a very powerful library that lets you very simply express asynchronous logic. So I like I like it, but Let's let's like actually consider this. What 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 does it look like using a promise, and what does it look like, look like using RxJS, and what are the trade-offs exactly? So this is maybe a good time to revisit this concept. Uh, and also, just a disclaimer for React developers watching, because there are always React developers watching. Um, telling people not to use observables in Angular is kind of like telling people to not use use effect in React. It's basically the way you get. Uh, the way you control the timing of when things happen. Because in Angular, everything's permanent. Uh, the template is the only thing that's reactive. And in React, everything is just chaotically re-rendering all the time. So React tends to be over-reactive and you use hooks to get away from that. And in Angular, very few things are actually reactive and you use RxJS to bring in the reactivity. So yeah, a lot of React developers have weird experience with observables because they were recommended to be used in weird situations but i yeah it's definitely an awesome library for any library that for any framework like react that isn't uh kind of overreacting all the time anyway so here's an example of uh of using a promise this is similar to what he uh what the author had in his article um so basically with the template you just access the value directly you declare the property person with whatever type it is and then 
with ArxJS. If you want to bail out as fast as possible, you can convert it to a promise right here with this function. I think this is how you do it. I've never actually used this in a real app. But um, then you dot then and assign it to the property. Okay. So that's how that looks like. Now, how does it look like? How does it look with um, RxJS? Well, um, basically, you're going to have the property, the person defined in one place as an observable. And then you're going to, uh, at the top of your template right here, you're going to unwrap it with the async pipe and then access it throughout the template. So what is actually simpler? Well, obviously the promise is slightly simpler because how many concepts do you have to understand? You have to understand this function and then dot then that you do with promises. Other than that, it's kind of regular classes with Arc or uh, JavaScript. And then uh, your Angular template, it can, can't be any simpler than that. With with ArxJS, um, it's, it's actually less code overall because you define the person in one place instead of broken up into two places. So that's one benefit of declarative code that I think is worth it inherently. Like already it beats promises. So I think it's worth it already. And then and then you just add this, which will become easier in future Angular, I hope. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure it will. So what what are the actual trade-offs? With ArxJS, you get declarative code immediately. And with this convention here, it's not too bad. Okay? That's actually pretty pretty easy. Um, and then with, with promises, it slightly less... I, I mean, I don't even think it's that much simpler. I think just in 2016, more Angular developers were familiar with promises because that we, we they were even back in old you know angular js 2014 2015 uh, with you know different libraries to implement them but anyway so i strongly prefer observables even for this case because in angular there's no way to get around the fact that you have to understand the async pipe so you have to understand how subscriptions and observables work angular provides you observables in many places and it provides you a way to consume them in the template so it's very easy to uh, once you have that basic foundation of understanding what observables are and how subscriptions behave, it, things like the multiple requests aren't going to surprise you. And and there's kind of no way to get around it. it. You have to fight really hard to get around that, uh, understanding those concepts. But once you understand those concepts, there's pretty much no benefit to using a promise here instead of an observable. So I hope that developers who are following this Twitter account that shared the old article. I hope, you know, if they're if they're new developers and some of them end up watching this, I hope you know that um, it's, you, ArxJS is important to learn if you're gonna learn Angular. It's pretty much critical. And, you know, at least basics. Uh, and the more you know, the better, because you can't, because of the benefits of declarative code. If you're interested in, in hearing more about those benefits, uh, I have, I have a video two videos ago uh, that's called Five Reasons to Avoid Imperative Code. And you see a couple of them here. One of them is the split definition of person. If you want to know why person is the value it is at some time, you have to look at two different places. Whereas here, you just look at one place. Okay? So it's split into the definition. What defines person is scattered throughout the code. Um, and yeah, so the other the other thing is it's slightly less code, so it's cleaner code in general. Um, but one other thing is, even if promises were significantly simpler, it would still be better to use observables because um, it's promises would involve more concepts in general, so you have to understand promises and observables, and then. Uh, if you had a feature that became more complex, you know, like I don't, I don't understand, like so much of what developers use to measure uh, different technologies is an understanding that apps tend to be static, like they never change. Like you, you get the UX, or you get the 
the design from the designer. And then that's like how you're, how you expect it to be forever. But the thing is, a lot of businesses, most businesses should be like this. You don't know how to predict everything. And so things can change. Things can become more dynamic as you understand how users are actually uh, making use of, of your app. So things change and, and, you know, software, good code, clean code, like by definition is easy to change. It's easy to understand, change, all of that. So observables are clean code because they're a lot easier to extend with behavior. They're simple like this when the behavior is simple, but if let's say they added a drop down where you could select a person and then you need to fetch details of the person when they, you know, when that ID changes, here's how you do that with RxJS. You just do uh, select elected ID equals whatever you define the observable and then that gets changed when they select stuff. And then right here, all you have to do is you just change how person is defined. You just bring in a switch map and use the ID to fetch that. And that's what person is. How you use it doesn't change. And, and it's just you changed like one line of code to change where person came from. So that's very simple compared to imperative code where uh, you would have to create a, a handler here, change a person, select a person, whatever, where you'd set the ID. And then that's the exact same time you need this to run again. So you'd probably copy this code or you extract this into a, a second method. Um, basically, person would then become defined across three different places because three because you're not able to abstract time away from the equation. You have to uh, you have to have a block of code for each instance in time, and so it's separated by when the code runs instead of what it's relevant to. So, yeah, yeah, you, you should uh, go watch the video I made about five reasons to avoid imperative code. I have an example that explains that more in depth. Um, right. So those are the reasons I think that you should always use observables instead of promises in Angular. I can't think of any reason beyond, you know, just the initial simplicity of promises that is quickly uh, outweighed by the benefits of, of having uh, consistency with your Angular features and the ability to extend it easily and async declarative code from the beginning. Um, and yeah, so yeah. Yeah, so that's this video. I wasn't planning on doing this video initially. I've actually been working on state adapt. I am almost done with the entity adapter. It's, uh, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be better than Nginx Entity and the Redux Toolkit because what you have is a, a small adapter for the entity. And then all these actions that you can do, these state changes you can do with, with entity, you can actually add these smaller um, state changes from the entity adapter itself. So anyway, it's a lot more powerful. Um, and so I've been writing a lot of tests, and those have been going well. Um, so I should have 1.0 released after I use this on a few projects. So I don't know, I think in a couple of weeks probably. But anyway, so brief state adapt update since I haven't uploaded a video in a while. But all right, uh, thanks for watching and let me know if you have any comments. Uh, yeah, all right, thanks, see ya.